What's up guys, Ian Sandusky from Practical Machinist, back here again. Today we are at East Tech with Zola. I'm with Cody and Dietmar. Cody, what's your role in Zola? Uh, Dave, thanks for having us first of all. Um, my name is Cody Mitchell, I'm the East Coast Territory Manager for Zola Incorporated. And Dietmar? Hi, my name is Dietmar, I'm the Director of Business Development. And what are we looking at today here at East Tech? when it comes to Zoller? So today we've got a lot of exciting technology. Um, Zoller, uh, we have four main branches as you would call them. Uh, we have tool management, tool presetting, tool inspection, and automation. Um, so we have a lot of that technology here today and that's what we're gonna go through. Where would guys. we like to start? I know you guys have a lot of interesting things we wanna look at. We wanna start looking at this here? Yeah, absolutely. What are we standing in front of right now? So, Dietmar, I'll let you take this away and explain yes. it a little bit. Everybody of us knows Industry 4.0, IoT, big buzzwords. But it's there, and it's uh, a good reason why it's there, because all the companies need to be more efficient, more organized, and Zola's answer is tool management solution. What you see here is based on our vending solution. Everything is driven from one database. You have here our keeper where you can store tool assemblies or uh, tool holders. They are normally locked. I show you that here as well. It's our tool organizer for single components. Now you put the tools, tool organizer, the tools in there right in the actual tool holder. Yes. Cat 40 or Cat 50. Exactly. This little, although real estate is expensive these days, 390 HSK cutting tools you get in that uh, keeper. And we have a bigger version as well. And what you see here, our tool organizer is electrically controlled. Uh, so this is all remotely controlled by this computer? Exactly. Industry 4.0, everything is connected, everything talks to each other. The operator is guided, it's unlocked, everything is locked. So that light actually lights up to tell them exactly where to go and where to get that. Exactly. So they can go get their inserts yeah. that they called out. Exactly. Remove the single component, close it, as soon as I shut, everything is locked again. So now I can't just walk up here if I'm in your shop, go grab a tool. I actually need exactly. to use the exactly. system. Exactly. Full inventory control. We have all the mechanical and everything is digitally <clears throat> kept in there. So the biggest benefit of this is as a company, I know exactly what tools I have, how often they're getting used, that things get lost. Where and how many. Exactly. Very easy, straightforward. Another very important part of Industry 4.0, how do you connect your machine tool? I want to show you our new zip code 4.0. What we do is we quickly measure one cutting tool on the presetter, which is over here. Um, we have here, every cutting tool is serialized. So that's actually a QR code. Exactly. The only thing what I need to do, I measure my cutting tool. You see here our smile 4.0, we fully measure it. And as soon as I send the data to our database, I can scan it at any given point of time at the zip code, 4.0 controller. Wow. So that's doing that all automatically, right? Exactly. It's a fully CNC machine. Here are my values. Send them out to the solar database, not to the controller yet. I'm done. I clear the machine. And the only thing what the operator needs to do, scan that barcode. No fat fingering anymore, nothing like that. And that's going to give the machine, your actual controller here, all the information from that machine. Exactly. So now you see here the buttons, I say load. No information are at the machine. I just scan it. It will identify automatically which job, Eastec 21, zip code SS. It's yellow because something is missing. Let's check what is in there. No, not in there. Ah, the magazine is missing. Advantage is, I be flexible wherever I want to put the cutting tool in the pocket. Let's say we put it in nine. I just type in nine. I hit save. The data output button appears on the screen. And now in a second you will see, right now we have zero. As soon as I hit the button, transferred. Child's play. Easy. Extremely easy. Now, this can connect into any kind of uh, controller, any, any kind of CNC. Exactly, any controller. And think about legacy machines. Right. Controllers, everybody wants to be the Industry 4.0 up there, but I have, you cannot just throw out old machines. Zip code 4.0 will help you to get this up, these older machines connected to, so to the Industry 4.0. 
your old machines in service longer, make them a little bit more uh, adaptable, and basically keep you in the game with older machines. Exactly. Awesome. Exactly. Now, when you say Industry 4.0, for those who don't know, what are we talking about when we say Industry 4.0? How I explain Industry 4.0, essentially, the idea is to have everything interconnected within your company, from departments over machine tools. The right. tool management can help you right from the cam down to the shop floor. Sitco can help you to transfer the data output to your machine tool, and everything is running from one database. Everything talks back and forth. That is, for me, a what true industry format. It's the centrality of it all. So exactly. nothing's operating on its own. Yeah, correct. Makes right. a lot of sense. And, and I think, um, guys, that, that's. If you take anything away from that, that's the big thing, the single source database, right? I mean, every manufacturing company is still, they're dealing with CAM and they're dealing with where's my tool set? They're dealing with, well, how do I preset my tools and get the offsets? But, you know, here we have a single source database solution all the way basically from start to part. And that's how we kind of tie everything together, kind of like what we've just seen here. No, it's, it's very, very interesting. Now, for a machine like this, what size shop would you recommend these for? Is this for your smaller end shop or just for your any, larger shop? Any. Reason why? When you think about you have one crash inside your shop, might be just destroy a tool, might be destroy a part, might be the whole spindle is gone. Right. I read an article every, every 70 keystroke is an error. Yeah. When you write an email, no issue, <laughs> but here it's a big issue. I've done it before. And, it, and it's a very economical investment, which really helps the uptime, you're faster with the input, and it's process secure. And when it comes to actually connecting these to your machines, do you guys install them on the machines? Yes. Do you come in? You Our apps in? engineers will do that, yes. Say ring up to the customer. Yep. Awesome. Well, thanks for showing us. Okay. Appreciate Ian, it. Thank you much. Cody, All right, Cody, so what are we going to take a look at now? Yeah, so now um, we've kind of looked at our tool management presetting. On the other side of things, we have um, tool inspection solutions. Okay. So this is going to be anywhere from the tool manufacturers, of course, uh, manufacturing tooling. Um, but we also have the companies doing uh, incoming tool inspection right. uh, to verify tools, um, you know, for very expensive parts, very, maybe. Very high end parts, where if you have a chip flute or something, you're scrapping out. Absolutely. $100,000 job. So it's them. very, very critical. Um, or in house regrinding. Uh, a lot of Great. companies don't in-house free grinding. Um, so we have a couple of different solutions that we're going to take a look at today that we have here for those type of uh, manufacturing facilities. Sounds good to me. What should we start with? So uh, I'm going to bring in Werner Lucan here. Pause. Turn off the mic. Turn off. Okay. Yeah, right. Hey, hi. Okay, so we're going to bring in Werner. Werner, hey. thanks for joining us today. Ian. What do you do at Zoller? Hey, I'm uh, the Director of Tool Inspection Solutions. So basically, I take care of, of uh, everything relating, relating to tool inspection versus the other departments of uh, presetting and tool, uh, tool management and also automation. So my sole focus is on inspecting the, inspecting the cutting tool. And what are we going to look at, sir? Well, our newest uh, baby here is a genius. So <clears throat> it's, it's all well known, you know, but we've we designed it bottom up, much sturdier, much heavier. And we have some niceties, you know, the door now opens up and down. So if you can come in here, now we have a much nicer, oh, that's a good start, much nicer <laughs> uh, panel. It's just a demo unit. <laughs> yeah, it's a demo. No, no problem. And uh, yeah, look, we have the bushings all here now. It's a very nice holder here. So then we have the, uh, Maybe you can see that from here, that, that's the, the cabinet with all the electronics in there, nicely accessible. Um, new one hand operating device, the button, much nicer. And so this machine is for actually inspecting the tools. Exactly. Yeah, my sole purpose is, what I make sure is, you are a shop owner, I heard, yes, right? Yes, yes. So you basically have to assume that this tool is, 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 is okay yes. within its tolerances. So, but I make sure that the tool itself, in itself, is 100% is, is in relation to the shank. Right. We're talking rake, angle, core diameter, run out, corner radius, gas. This machine can tell all of that. All of that fully automatically. How do we run it? Basically, yeah. You stick the tool in, clamp it. So with one button, that tool is going to be locked in? Yep, it's hydraulic. So basically, I can also show, if we want to go a step back, I can take it out here. So this is basically our, th our hydraulic truck. You, you before here, it applies anaerobic pressure, but we can also put an S Cat 50, you know. So it's actually our, our well-known spindle. Oh, see, this is knife. That's what happens. 
Um, Cat 50 spindle now, right? Oh, so you put a Cat 50 tool holder yep. right in there and measure straight off that. Right. And that goes for all of other presetters too, you know, so or we call it size one spindle. Yeah. My, my favorite weapon of choice is this one. HSK, is that what that is? That would be a straight bushing, 32 millimeter. HSK is this one here. Is that one there? Yep. I use that for grinding wheels, for example. That's another topic for me, what we actually preset. So, this is actually what I call inspection, inspection but uh, we preset grinding wheels, you know, oh, and we can send the data to the grinding machine, anchor, num, uh, num rotor, volumatic, volmer, load the tool, clamp it. And this is the output for that? Yeah. Okay. So, software wise, the newest thing, you know, we have a pilot for, I don't know whether it has been talked about earlier. What I really like the most is basically my uh, widgets here. So I can just go back to step one here, for example, and then go my widget, press shift F5. Everybody who knows their own machine, that they know that usually have to press shift F5. Here, just press my widget. It right the, now, what's that gonna do? It finds, it, it finds the tool. Right now, see, uh, it finds the end of the tool. So that's the corner of the tool right there that yes. it's represented. Yep. It's basically a shadow. We got two cameras here. This will be the, the shadow, and the other one we're gonna see next should have cleaned it also, is, uh, it's just a 2D measurement as a reference in this case. Right. And this whole thing I measure right now is a rake angle. So what, what, for those who don't know, what are we talking about when we talk about rake angle? The cutting angle. So whatever so angle that is on. If I slice the tool in half, yep. and no, I mean, end of the day, like a rake in, in, the, in the yard, you know? Yeah. We rake basically the, the material out of the part. Out of the stock. Right? Yeah, this is basically an index. For, so that's for, an actual, that's a picture of the side of that yep. cutter right now. That's basically here my, my 3D, what we call 3D camera. It's a radial view. See now we basically, now we perform a 3D scan. You can see there's focus pixels and blurry pixels. And what this camera can do is, it will collect all the focus pixels along the path. Oh wow, look at that. And then we put together a point cloud. See, and then we're gonna see a complete picture of the whole thing. And we know every coordinate of every pixel here, and then we can slice it any way we want. It would be a tapered tool, we can slice it at an angle. Yeah, so. Normally, it wouldn't be possible without destroying a tool. Because you literally need to EDM it in half or grind it in half. Exactly. And then use a microscope, whatever, you know. We don't need to do that here. Yeah. And then uh, I just can look at the rake, you know. I can look at the curve here. Come on. This is my rake face here. This is a section. That would be my clearance. I can go to 3D. Oh, let's better take the mouse here. Got thick fingers. See, that was our, our scan. And then we section it like so, right here, through a 3D scan, and, and a miniature 3D scan. See, I don't need to scan the whole tool. That's my rake face. Right. So we, now, that, I mean, if we, I don't know how much time we have, but well, how do we now put an angle on this banana curve? I mean, right. we can put a tangent here, that's, or put a, put a line between two dots, you know. And who is this information very important? Everybody. I mean, let's say regrinding, in-house regrinding, or incoming inspection. Let's say uh, you have a very hard material, and all of a sudden you have a 10 degree rake, the tool is going to fail immediately. Right. It has to be much, the softer material, the, 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 the steeper the rake can get. So it's verifying that what you have coming in the door that you've ordered is actually what you're getting. Correct. And before you put it on, on your $200,000 bulkhead for a helicopter, Maybe you might want to check. Work. <laughs> yeah, then the machine would pay itself off in the first day. That's true. Now, on that who, kind of part. Who do you see putting these on the floor right now? What kind of shops are putting these in? Um, basically, two uh, production and initial yep. manufacturers, regrind. So more on the manufacturing end of guys who are really uh, interested. All in over. Yeah, I mean, if, if you're big enough, I mean, let's say you have in house regrinding, it's a very uh, hot topic. Yep. And these people, of course, they have to learn, they have to teach themselves. So, this is a, a good exact teaching tool. But what is my machine actually grinding? You don't know. I mean, if you have done it for 30 years, you have a pretty good idea. Yeah. <laughs> but even then, the, the, the today's torrent is we want to be much tighter. 
Right. Well, then let's say within half a degree of a rake, for example, we talked about a rake. And especially when you're dealing with these new super speed spindles, you need to make sure everything is balanced properly. And, and this yeah. will be able to tell. It will completely 3D image that tool if you want it to. Not completely, but it will tell you everything. Um, you get all the information out of it, I should say. Yeah, clearance right. angle, let's say, whatever, eccentric clearance, for example. Exactly. Um, it will tell you everything, yeah. And fully automatically, you don't need a, I mean, once it's programmed, anybody can stick the tool in and run it. So you don't need a specialized operator to run no, this no. once it's ready to To go. program, yes. But um, that's the same with, with every machine, right? But, I mean, that's where I come in. I mean, uh, my, my point is really, this is a tool for me, but uh, I, 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 I bring it, we bring it somewhere and integrate it properly. And then we teach the people, and then we, we, we follow up and then uh, stay by their side, you know, that's, that's that was the main reason for the success so far. The whole thing, you know, uh, the whole story, so to yeah, say. Um, that, yeah, hope it does. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for showing this. This is excellent. Oh yeah, I got yeah. one more, one more highlight. Of course. And uh, that would be here. That's brand new in the US. It's the very first unit. What are we looking at here? So, this basically measures, for example, the rake angle, which is, <clears throat> Well, I still we'll call it a macro, macro feature. Right. The next step up, down basically, or was the cutting edge, which is a kind of a micro feature, you know, but it's this, and this still, this, this is called my, our mu focus or my focus. It still does that, you know, it measures the cutting edge preparation, the, this, um, the radius, for example, or a K-land. So what happens is, there's two reasons for that. One would be, uh, you know, you need a, prepare the cutting edge prior to uh, coating, right. so that the coating sticks properly, or you need it for a certain performance. Right. Let's say you've been machine titanium, uh, and, and you want to right away have a, a predictable performance of that cutting tool, you apply some, some honing. It's, it's actually very easy to apply that. You use, use brushes or drag finish, uh, blasting, but then extremely hard to quantify it. So this is where our machines, our, our systems like the, the, the well-known POM SKP came in. But that could solely or only measure the hone. Right. The surface finish, now this guy is another level of, of, of uh, resolution that you need. So to put this in very simple terms, this is a very, very specialized surface yeah. roughness measure Absolutely. for tools like this. Extremely specialized. Right. However, there's others, you know, but, uh, that, that provide that. But but what we come in is our sole focus is now on, on cutting tools. We don't measure any parts, you know. Now we actually might, actually, better effect with the surface finish, but we are the only ones who really focus on, on, on the cutting tool application here. So, yeah, I mean, here I just measured the, uh, the hone. Let me just, the newest thing now is surface finish. I want to measure the surface finish here on the shank. I picked it because. We have an optical system here, and of course we deal with a shiny surface. Let me uh, open the program so here. So that's a camera right there in the bottom of yeah, that it's, tool? And this it's, is called the My Focus. My yep, my, well, the Mu actually. Mu Focus. So this is, it's a confocal laser system, and this is a okay. lens here. And it actually does, also does a 3D scan in a way, you know. It, 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 it. So let me just open the tool here real quick, and then, uh, What's happening? Oh, here, no, I finally loaded it. Probably the computer was, uh, went to sleep or something. So let me brighten the light up a little bit. So here we can see the laser, the blue point. Oh, wow. So let me align it. Here we see the shank. So what are you looking for right now on that screen? I'm just focusing here, so I can actually see it here. The laser point gets, the smaller it gets, the more focus it gets, so it okay. gets me in the vicinity. So now I'm actually, this is actually my surface here. I'm gonna adjust my lighting automatically. See, now I darkened it. So now I can actually see um, the, the shank surface. And then, yeah, once I'm aligned, I teach the reference point here and just press measure, and now, it will actually perform like a 3D scan combined with a laser. Over the surface of that shank. Yeah. The secret is that the resolution is like on another level than what we had prior. You need, right. because you can imagine surface finish is sub-micron. Um, so you need an optical system 
that, that, that performs on that level. So yeah. See here we got the surface finish now. I mean it's so simple. that's an actual image of the surface finish. Yeah, that's an actual here, yeah. That's the uh, actually it's this. And when I run down this here, this will tell me if, if I understood yeah. what those numbers meant, it would tell me what the any, surface finish is at any given point on it. Yeah. These are all known surface finish parameters known to man. Right. Additionally now what we have is uh, sur uh, area finish. Right. So what everybody talks about is surface finish means it's it's a trajectory of one line. Uh, basically a tracer, contracer, where you name it. But with the advent of, of, uh, of, of these systems here, we can all, all of a sudden measure area finish. So that has, I mean, let's see whether that leads in the future, but it's possible at least. It's going in, a, in an interesting direction. Yeah, sure. because what, I mean, what does long one line tell me? I mean, uh, you know, we want to know what is this area right. doing? So let's see, it's, we're at the, in, 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 in its infancy with that, with that um, area finish, so let's see. But I can't wait to play more with it, and I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna everybody invite anybody who wants uh, to see it, you know, to an arbor, um, and uh, can't wait to get, wait to get your feedback, no, from, actual feedback from from the shops and uh, compare it and. Absolutely. But I'm, I'm super excited, you know. Me too. Well, thank you very much for showing us today. Oh yeah. Really appreciate it. What can we expect from Zoller in the coming year? Yeah, um, no problem. Uh, this actually is our U.S. premiere for this new My Focus. Right. Um, as always, uh, you know what I, what I would like to bring up. Um, you know, we see all this technology, right? And and it looks like a lot because it is a lot, right? We right. have all these great solutions, and we say that we can provide this single source database. Um, we have a lot of different ways that we can help determine, you know, a mom and pop shop or or a company with a hundred CNC machines. Right. They might differ from what solutions they need. Um, so of course we got a lot of content on our on our website. Um, we have our U.S. headquarters up in Ann Arbor, Michigan. Ann Arbor. Actually, yeah, Ann Arbor, Michigan. Um, we actually have uh, most of our products set up there. We have um, cameras in the ceilings where we can do live or virtual uh, live demos. Most people can actually watch it right from the computer. Absolutely, you? and and it's it's live, so they can ask their questions, intervene, make it as interactive as possible. Even though you know we're virtual, right? We're right. living in a world now of virtual. Uh, world so and we have the country broken up into 18 regions um, all 18 regions have their own outside uh, sales representatives outside service representatives um, we even have what we call Zoller on tour where we take some of these products in a van and we can actually bring it out to customers facilities so you know we're really about not only selling a, a solution but selling the right solution you know yeah, so what how can we fit in and what's the best solution for your applications your wants needs um, so we have a lot of ways that we can help out for that so hopefully you know in the next upcoming year we can do the virtual events, we can do shows like this, we can get out into the field at facilities. Uh, you know, we appreciate you coming in and, and oh, thank you very much exploding this on, on the social media realm. Where can we find you online? So it'd be www.zoller-usa.com. Excellent, thank you yep. very much, Cody. Hey, thanks. You guys have a great day. Yes, you too.